All right, welcome to this week's Whiteboard Wednesday. Uh, this week I'm going to be discussing food sensitivities. And I figured this was a relevant topic since the last couple episodes I've been dealing with resilience and stress and stressors um, on the body and how those things can add up and cause problems. And so food sensitivities is obviously, you know, any food sensitivity is going to be a pretty big stress on the body, some more than others. It just depends on the individual and how severe their particular reaction is to that. But this is a concept that not a whole lot of people understand and not a whole lot of people understand that symptoms that they may be having, health problems that they may be having and how those are related to their diet, both you know, just the general quality of their diet and specific things that they may be sensitive to. <clears throat> the first topic I wanted to talk about is a topic called masking. It's something called masking. And <clears throat> this is something that confuses a lot of people because often if I say to someone, you might be sensitive to X food, whatever that may be, <clears throat> if I'm taking a look at their diet and, and trying to relate some of the symptoms that they may be having or they're describing reactions that they maybe have to particular foods, if I say, you may, maybe you're sensitive to this, a lot of people give a little bit of a push back on that and say, well, I've been eating this my whole life and it hasn't given me any issues. And that doesn't necessarily <clears throat> mean anything. If just because you're not experiencing short-term uh, symptoms from consuming a particular food, that doesn't mean that it's not affecting you long-term. And so what masking is, is essentially if you eat enough of a food that you're sensitive to, your body will essentially give up giving, uh, on giving you feedback, short-term feedback, because that's typically what you get. If you consume a food that you don't react well to for the very first time, you know, maybe you'll experience some stomach pain, some bloating, maybe a headache, maybe diarrhea, a number of different <clears throat> immediate symptoms, short-term symptoms that tell you, oh wow, okay, I, maybe I shouldn't be eating this. But if you eat it enough, on a regular enough basis, your body will essentially give up and you may not experience those short-term symptoms, but you may have longer-term health problems as a result. Maybe you get sick more often, or some you have asthma or other autoimmune issues. So some of those longer term consequences to something and it's hard to relate diet or a specific food in your diet to those long term problems because it isn't an immediate reaction oftentimes. <clears throat> and one of the issues now is that people are brought up from childhood eating so many different things and things that are often food, you know, you know digestive irritants for people. So you know, tons of kids very at a very early age are consuming dairy products. They're consuming, you know, wheat and gluten. They're consuming a lot of times soy from a very young age. So a lot of those things that a lot of the common food sensitivities that are out there, children are consuming from a very young age. And so they're not, they don't even remember the first time they, they ate it. And so they're not they weren't thinking at that point, okay, I'm having a bad reaction to this. And most parents aren't aware enough to say, okay, my child is having you know, a temper tra tantrum. Maybe that is related to what they ate earlier in the day or something of that nature. And so people grow up and eating a particular food their entire life. And so, but they're not experiencing those short-term symptoms because they, their body gave up on that. And so... They don't understand that some of the health problems that they may be having, some of the that don't that aren't immediately or an immediate reaction to a particular food, they don't realize that those still may be caused by a particular food in their diet. So that's what masking is. And some people would say, oh well, isn't that just building up a tolerance to it? Not exactly. Yes, you are building up a tolerance to short-term symptoms of that that food that you're sensitive to. But again, that doesn't mean that you're not going to have longer term consequences. 
for ex and those long-term consequences can be physical. They can even be mental and emotional as well. And those symptoms can change over time. For example, someone can start off in their early childhood, they might have eczema. And during their teenage years, they may have asthma. Most people who have asthma have or have had eczema at one point in their life. <clears throat> and maybe they, they seem to outgrow the asthma that goes away eventually. And then maybe they start having some issues with depression and anxiety. That could potentially be caused <clears throat> by something in their diet that's affecting their gut and their gut health. And as a result, that's affecting their mental health as well. And a lot of people don't realize that gut health and <clears throat> mental health are very closely related. And dysbiosis of the gut <clears throat> excuse me, can cause mental symptoms, you know, depression, anxiety, the list goes on and on. And so, yes, and so it's, it's hard to relate those things to whatever consequences, you know, to whatever physical or mental consequences a person may be experiencing, but that doesn't mean it's not being caused by diet or specific food in the diet. And so, that, yeah, got into the, the short-term and long-term <clears throat> effects. That's part of, it's kind of within this masking topic. And so really the only way to actually find out if there is a particular food in your diet that's causing long-term health consequences is through some sort of elimination diet. That's really the only way. Yes, you can go have allergy testing done. <clears throat> sometimes that works okay. Sometimes it doesn't. Testing for uh, gluten sensitivity is still not particularly good, and there are lots of people who experience negative effects, even immediate negative effects, to gluten or wheat specifically sometimes, <clears throat> who they don't show up. No sensitivity to gluten actually shows up in testing because that testing is just simply, it's, it's inferior <clears throat> at this point in time, and there's a lot more time that's needed before that testing becomes such that it can really pick out people who have a severe reaction to that. So an elimination diet is really the only way to tell if you're allergic to specific foods. And some of the <clears throat> main culprits to start off with in terms of what you're eliminating. Let's see. So gluten or potentially wheat specifically. <clears throat> Soy is another big one. Dairy. Eggs. <clears throat> and sometimes oats. Now there are tons of other things that people can be sensitive to, but those, again, are the main culprits. <clears throat> And so those are some of the first things that people should <clears throat> be eliminating in any sort of elimination diet. Now, what an, elimin an, sorry, what an elimination diet is, is it's removing a particular food from your diet for a specific amount of time. <clears throat> now, a good amount of time to remove a food for is typically going to be seven to nine days. But sometimes <clears throat> people are even going to need to remove a particular food for even longer, for two weeks even. Some people really don't start to notice bad reactions to things until they remove it for even up to a month. But seven to nine days is a good place to start. And once you go seven to nine days, say we're getting rid of gluten, once you go seven to nine days, completely gluten-free, nothing that contains gluten, nothing <clears throat> that even contains gluten contamination. Once you go seven to nine days, you can reintroduce those, those gluten-containing foods into your diet, <clears throat> and preferably 
reintroduce them multiple times throughout that day and in multiple different forms. So you maybe try, try whole grains, maybe trying some sort of processed bread, you know, trying gluten in combination with some other things like dairy, because sometimes it's the combinations that cause the problem and not necessarily a particular food. It might be a combination of foods. So seven to nine days without a particular food or substance that's contained within foods, reintroduce it in a number of different ways and see what your reaction is to those foods. And if you don't really have anything, any sort of reaction to that, it's probably not causing a whole lot of problems in, in terms of your health. You know, maybe it, you have a very slight reaction to it, but what we're looking for is, is large reactions. And most of the time people will, will realize uh, <laughs> very, <clears throat> very badly, you know, exactly how much that's affecting them. And, and so I should make the note that it would be a good idea to reintroduce that on a weekend where you don't have to go to work in case, you know, it gives you headaches or bowel distress. You know, you don't want to have issues with that while you're at work. If you're sitting at home on your couch uh, during the weekend, that's less of an issue. So those are kind of the elimination diet basics. And you can obviously continue eliminating things week by week. You know, eliminate one thing each week and continue potentially into other foods <clears throat> that you seem to have a reaction to. If you're logging your foods, if you're logging your meals and everything, and you're noticing, okay, I experience, you know, a slump in energy after I eat this, or this, you know, I felt a little bloated after I ate this, you can proceed to other food groups or <clears throat> substances, con substances contained within foods aside from those, those main culprits. So those are the elimination diet basics. <clears throat> you can get a lot more in depth with that. And again, you can receive testing, but that's not the end all be all. If you do get some sort of allergy testing done, use that more so as a guide than as just the be all end all of what you may or may not be allergic to. So. <clears throat> Use that as a guide. If something really shows up as, okay, I'm, I'm sensitive to this, test it out through an elimination diet. Don't just say, okay, I'm not going to eat this, and th this didn't show up at all, so I'm going to eat lots of that. So those are some basics in terms of food sensitivities. I may continue this topic, depending on how much interest there is in it. I may continue getting into uh, <clears throat> some other things like food rotation and, and things of that nature to get into a little, a little bit more specific into this topic. But that's all for this week, and we'll see you next time.